Hello and good morning. Let's continue with our lecture on mobile devices. Topic 2 of mobile technology. So, uh, let's look at the review. So, for the last lecture, we have already learned about evolution of mobile devices, mobile device characteristics, mobile user characteristics, and also some of part of uh, concept of so, for now, we will look into the topic of device taxonomy, general purpose devices, and also targeted devices. So, let's look into device taxonomy. Let's recap back what we have already learned about user characteristics. So, we've learned uh, on the, our previous lecture on device characteristics that uh, users are usually interruptible, easily distracted, sociable, identifiable, and always immersed in their own environment. However, regardless of this characteristic, each user needs and interest varies greatly based on their preference and also their work when they are using their mobile devices. So an email-centric user might want a Ring Blackberry or Palm Trio that uh, offers a rich information service instead of an entertainment system. So these are always based on the user. Usually this is affected by the user's profession or their habit or their focus in their uh, everyday life. So another example is a salesperson may prefer to put high priority on voice-based communication than data services in order to make sales calls. And then an internet marketer or a blogger might need to see a large amount of information simultaneously and might prefer devices with a larger screen size. While a student who are always immersed in a social networking would like a device that focus on instant messaging and the web. So for this reason, mobile computing devices will not converge on a single physical form. And that's why most of the Vendors or manufacturers will try to create several class of mobile devices to cater to each and every of the user's needs. So these are some of the classes of uh, mobile devices or ubiquitous computing devices that are available to us today. So we have tablet, phones or tablets, and wearables such as watch and rings and also appliances and also uh, embedded computing devices uh, in uh, phones and also targeted devices that are also loaded with mobile operating system. So let's look into the general purpose and targeted devices. So first and foremost, we have general purpose devices. General purpose devices are intended to target specific market needs, which are likely to be frequently used within the domain of work, entertainment, and communication. So uh, most of these multi-purpose devices uh, have uh, entertainment focuses that are likely to be near the user when the entertainment is acceptable. So uh, this purpose of entertainment can be in form of uh, watching videos or playing games. So um, for this matter, general purpose devices have entertainment application. So some of these general purpose devices may even put emphasis on media playing with video and music that are prominently featured, okay, such as this. Okay, this is uh, an example of uh, general purpose devices with a primary function. This is an example of um, Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. So this is a device which uh, focus on gaming in general, but it is also have an add-on feature or secondary feature. So what is a primary feature and add-on feature? So a primary feature is usually uh, focus on the primary use of that particular device. For example, a device that focus on gaming as its primary feature may be distinguished by having obvious hardware or industry design that highlight gaming control, okay, such as the keypad or the four-way directional pad. Okay, an add-on feature on the Sony Xperia Play uh, would consist of uh, a, a least frequently used uh, application on that particular uh, devices, okay, such as reading books, right? Reading books or watching um, video or surfing the internet. 
another uh, device that uh, we are going to show here about um, that are uh, having primary and add-on feature is Samsung Galaxy Zoom. So Samsung Galaxy Zoom is a successor to Samsung Galaxy Camera, which combine camera functionality as a primary feature and internet application and a phone as an add-on feature. So a device that, uh, we, that have a primary feature usually designed to appeal other market segment while still offering other features as an add-on. That is a device that are designed for taking camera might have an enlarged camera lens. Okay, that is an obvious industrial function. But it is still have an add-on features uh, that uh, allow that device to be used uh, as a phone or as a web uh, browser or as um, uh, gaming devices. So uh, that particular device that targets certain, certain feature may sacrifice usability of other features. So uh, let's see on uh, the example on Samsung Galaxy Camera and Sony Xperia Play. So playing games on uh, Samsung Galaxy Camera is possible, but the game folder might be obscure and most likely have not dedicated hardware control such as uh, Sony Xperia Play, uh, such as this one. Because uh, Sony, uh, Sony Xperia Play is designed for uh, game, it does not have an enlarged lens such as Samsung Galaxy Camera. So this is uh, the comparison between uh, two general purpose devices that have a primary features and add-on features. Okay, both can do the same things, but the device that are focused on primary feature would have uh, an elaborate or obvious industrial function such as enlarged uh, lens and also camera button for making it easy for the user to take photos. Okay, this is another example of specialized phone which have primary features such as Caterpillar 61 rugged uh, smartphone or Cat 61. So uh, this smartphone can be used in under extreme condition. It is water resistant and it also have a thermal camera, obviously uh, targeted to be used for industrial environment. So this is uh, a form of uh, primary feature versus add-on features. So having a primary features is important, right? But it's not that as important as having also an add-on features. The primary features means that that particular device may have an obvious uh, industrial design or hardware design that are catered to focus specifically for that features. Okay, let's look into a targeted device. So targeted device is almost similar to a device that have a primary features, except that in targeted device, the device is solely developed to achieve a single function. Okay, it even does not have an add-on features. So there are several targeted devices that exist around you. So uh, most importantly, some uh, time targeted device is also known as uh, information appliances. So it is designed to help user to do a number of tasks and do them well and specifically. So because of this uh, simplicity, it cannot provide other facility to support other non-trivial operations such as making calls or sending SMS messages. And even then, the functionality is very limited. So uh, this is an example of targeted device. Okay, we have Samsung Galaxy NX camera, which is a camera, but it is loaded with an Android op operating system. So you can still uh, develop a mobile application for the Samsung NX camera. But the device are not capable to do certain things such as, as calling, right? Calling, making phone calls or sending instant uh, messaging text, okay? text messages. So what uh, the Android operating system provide for the Samsung Galaxy NX camera is uh, obviously the camera, the gallery, uh, YouTube, you can still uh, view YouTube application, you can access your calendar. And you can see the setting inside there, make some uh, tweaks and send emails and so on. It also have uh, connectivity such as Bluetooth uh, and also Wi-Fi. Okay, next, we also have um, 
Zoom or I, uh, iPod. Okay, this is also powered by uh, mobile operating system. Okay, uh, in case of iPod, we have iOS uh, for iPod or iPod Touch. And then we also have uh, Zoom, which is powered uh, by Windows Mobile. So this is also another form of targeted device. Okay, you have something like um, barcode scanner. So most of the barcode scanner are powered by Windows Mobile Operating System or Windows CE. So we also have a uh, meter reading device also powered by mobile operating system uh, such as uh, Windows. Okay, Windows Operating System. Okay, some also are powered by Symbian. Okay, this is for the previous generation of uh, meter reading devices. So all in all, you should remember that uh, there is also exist a targeted device aside from general purpose devices. So an example of targeted device is that uh, a device, a music device, right? And then we have handheld smart cameras such as um, Samsung Galaxy NX or Nikon uh, camera and then uh, a barcode scanner. We arrive at the end of this lecture session. So for the exercise, please list the four typical mobile user characteristics and then describe what is meant by general purpose device. And then please differentiate between primary feature and add-on feature of a general purpose device. All right, this is very easy. Okay, primary feature, uh, you have an obvious industrial function and then it is focused uh, to deliver the primary function uh, on the general purpose device. And that add-on feature is just a secondary um, application that helps the user to use the device, but it's not as prominently featured as a primary feature, okay, such as uh, browsing the internet or making a phone call, sending text messages, and so on. And then please explain the advantage of designing a general purpose device with a primary feature. Okay, this one you have to answer yourself. There are many ways or many reasons of why sometimes vendor would produce a general purpose, purpose device with a primary features. So uh, that's all for our lecture uh, for this session. Be seeing you on the next session, which we will be, will be covering ubiquitous computing.